How long does it take to have your first lucid dream? Let's find out. So first up, how long did it actually take me? Well, I was a little bit different. My first lucid dream happened spontaneously. Not everyone is going to have this. A lot of you guys, if you're coming to this channel, you're probably learning how to lucid dream for yourself. You've probably never had one before. Um, but for me, I had my first one spontaneously. I was about 16 years old, and just one day in the middle of a dream, I realised I was dreaming. I didn't really have a concept of lucid dreaming at the time. I think I'd vaguely heard of it, but I didn't really know what it was or understand it. But there I was, in a dream, realising that I was dreaming. And so from that point on, I started having lucid dreams. I had about seven or eight more of them over, say, a one, one and a half year, maybe two year period. I'm not sure of the exact length it was. Um, but they all happened spontaneously. They were spaced quite far apart, you know, this wasn't a common occurrence. But I just started having them. And after some time, I realised, you know, I had these lucid dreams and they were really cool, but a lot of them were quite short. And, you know, they were spaced so far apart that I wasn't getting anywhere with it. So I decided I wanted to learn how to lucid dream, so I actually started looking up videos and guides and so on. And I looked at all these different methods and I decided that mild seemed like one that would be good for a beginner. So I decided to try it out. I went to bed, I set an alarm to wake me up in 6 hours. I woke up after 6 hours and I started repeating the mantra. Now all the mild guides that I looked at at the time said repeat the mantra until you fall asleep. So that's what I did, I tried to repeat the mantra until I fell asleep. Unfortunately, I found I wasn't falling asleep and I wasn't going to while repeating the mantra. So I stopped repeating the mantra and went back to sleep. No lucid dreams, nothing of the sort. Next day, I did the same thing. Set an alarm for around six hours after I went to sleep and woke up, repeated the mantra. Again, I tried to fall asleep while repeating it, but it didn't work. So I just went back to sleep. This time, I had a lucid dream on my second night of trying. So first of all, you've learned there how I discovered that you actually don't need to keep repeating the mantra until you fall asleep with mild. You can actually stop it and just go back to sleep. And secondly, you'll have noticed that I got a lucid dream on my second night actually trying. So that was quite good. But you have to take into consideration all the lucid dreams I had before. After all, you know, if you've had a lucid dream before, it is much, much easier to have another lucid dream. So the fact that I had several spontaneous ones means that, you know, I had an easier time actually getting lucid when I was trying to do it myself. So, you know, if you heard that story before of how I had a lucid dream my second night trying, you know, keep that in mind because you're not necessarily going to have the same thing if you haven't had any lucid dreams before. Having your first lucid dream is going to be the hardest part. So what about you? How long is it going to take you to have your first lucid dream? Well, it really, really varies. Like I said, you know, having your first lucid dream is the hardest part. So if you already had one spontaneously, then it's probably not going to take you a long time to have another one through a method. If you already had one before from a method and you just haven't had one in some time, it's probably not going to take you as long as someone who's never had one. The main thing to keep in mind is consistency. If you only do them for a few days, take a break for a month, do them for a few days and keep doing that, then it's going to be a lot harder to get your first lucid dream. It could take you months or years. But if you're consistent and you keep working at the methods every day, and you're going to ensure that you do the methods correctly, you're going to learn how to do them properly, and you're going to have the highest chance possible of getting lucid as quickly as possible. The next thing to take into account is if you're doing the methods correctly. Some methods are more forgiving than others. For example, mild. Um, let's just say you do mild completely wrong. You set the alarm for the wrong time. You also do uh, the mantra wrong. You do some mantra that has nothing to do with a lucid dream. You just say some random mantra. Okay, that's a worst case scenario. What happens? Well, for one, you're setting your intention to lucid dream, so even that completely rubbish mantra is still going to have a chance of working. Um, you know, just because you're setting your intention to lucid dream as you fall back asleep in REM. Now, you've also set the alarm to the wrong time, so you're not waking up in REM. But if you're doing this consistently, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, then chances are you're going to hit an REM period eventually, um, either because you set the alarm wrong on one of those days, so you actually end up setting it to the right time, or because your REM periods shift, because that happens, you know, your REM periods aren't fixed to a set time every single day. Sometimes they shift about a little bit. So eventually, you know, if you keep doing it consistently, even doing mild incorrectly should eventually result in it happening correctly and you're getting lucid. Something like wild, on the other hand, is a lot less forgiving. If you're doing wild incorrectly, you're just going to lay there forever and not get lucid. Simple as that. Um, I was like that uh, when I first discovered wild. Uh, I couldn't get to sleep paralysis and at the time everyone was teaching that you had to go through sleep paralysis to do wild and I just couldn't seem to do it. I did it a couple of times uh, and the couple of times that I did it it was just too uncomfortable, I couldn't 
stay there, stay still, so I would struggle and it would end. Um, but I just couldn't get there most of the time, and so I thought the wild was impossible for me. It was only later when I learned how to relax in a different manner, that first of all it made sleep paralysis easier when I did try to go through that route, but it also taught me that I didn't have to go through that step and I learned how to do it differently. Um, but that took some time and had I kept doing it the same way I was doing it initially, I would have just kept trying and failing and trying and failing over and over again. So related to all of that, I want to talk about the alarm time thing. So the six hour alarm that I suggest, it's important to realise that you actually have to sleep for six hours. Uh, you know, it's not good enough to set your alarm for 6am and go to bed at midnight. Uh, if you're going to bed at midnight, it's going to take you at least a few minutes to fall asleep. So your alarm should be set at least a few minutes extra past the six hour bit. You know, I would suggest setting it for say 6.15, 6.20, uh, or if it takes you longer to fall asleep, then set it for longer. You want to be sleeping for six hours, you don't just want to be in bed that long, otherwise you're not going to end up in the right REM period. The next thing to take into account is that REM periods vary depending on your circumstances and depending on you as an individual. I want you to try something right now. Go to Google Images and type in a sleep stage chart and actually look at all the different images. You're going to see all these different images with all these bars on them and you're going to see some hours at the bottom and you're going to see different sleep stages. You're going to see like deep sleep, REM and so on. And if you look at the REM periods, look at what time the REM period around the six hour mark starts on the different charts. You're going to notice some charts where it starts at the six hour mark dead on. You're going to notice other ones where it starts at like the six hour thirty mark and other ones where it starts at like the seven hour mark. Why are all these charts different? Because REM periods aren't fixed. There isn't a set time where they're going to happen for every single individual. You know, six hours is a good guideline for most people, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be right for you. So experiment with different times if you've not been lucky and not had a lucid dream yet. You know, if you've been trying for a few weeks at the six hour time and you haven't had a single lucid dream, then experiment with say five hours, five hours 30, six hours 30 and so on. And you know, don't just change it every single night, but you know, do it for like a week each time and then switch to another one and so on. And then go through all the different times and you, you're going to eventually hit an REM period, so you're eventually going to get lucid. The next thing I suggest is trying to add in different methods. You know, you can do mild in combination with any other method. This is something that I've been doing for a while now. Whatever method that I want to do, say I want to do files, say I want to do while, I will get up in REM and I will repeat the mantra for two to three minutes that I would do for mild. Then I will do the other method. You know, that it gives the advantage of if you fall asleep or you fail the method, then you still have the mantra, you know, in pressing your memory to actually fall back on. How long is it going to take you? It could take you a day, it could take you several months. It really depends on how consistent you are, how well you do the methods, and also just environmental factors like how long you sleep, stuff like that. So don't try to tell yourself that it's going to take you a week or X amount of time. Just be patient with it, stay consistent, keep practicing and you're going to get there. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have, remember to subscribe there because I put out videos every single week. Now if you're interested in supporting the channel then I have a Patreon page that you can check out there. There's lots of different tiers and awards that you get for supporting me. So check that out, find out more about it over there. Thank you guys for watching, take care.